Welcome, these are grammar lessons for year three and four children and this is week six, lesson one. I hope you all had a lovely half term. Our focus for this week's work is to learn to improve our letter writing skills. So we will be learning about the features of an informal letter, writing our own letter and hopefully at the end of the week sending our letters to. The learning objective for this lesson is to know the features of an informal letter. So by the end of the lesson, you will know what the word informal means. You will also have read a range of informal letters and you will even be able to highlight the features of an informal letter. Before we begin then, let's have a look at the word informal and find out what it means. In the dictionary, it says that informal means a relaxed, friendly or unofficial style and that it's vocabulary suitable to everyday language and conversation rather than to official or formal contexts. So here's a sentence using the word we had an informal meeting over lunch. Now we're using the word informal in the context of letter writing. So let's find out what an informal letter is. Listen carefully because this will be really important knowledge for your work today. An informal letter is a letter that you might write to someone you know well, for example, a friend or relative, someone whose name you know. Types of informal letter might include thank you letters or postcards. So I want you to have a look carefully at these letters here, and I want you to decide which of them is an informal letter. If you need to pause the video for a moment while you have a careful look then do so and press play when you're ready to find out the answer. So out of these two letters it is the one on the left that is an informal letter. We can tell by the way it's addressed it says Dear Maya so this person knows Maya by her first name and the language in the letter is a little bit more chatty, it contains news and at the end it says hope to see you soon which means that these people must know each other well. What about these two letters? Have a look at these two and see if you can decide which one is an informal letter. Again, pause the video if you need to, to have a careful look and press play again when you want to find out the answer. So again, it's the letter on the left here that is the informal letter. Again, it begins by using the person's name and it ends with love Jenny and the contents of the letter contains some quite chatty, newsy language. And so we know that that letter is informal. Well done if you got those both right. Here are some more informal letters for you to read. We're going to read them through together in a moment. And I want you to listen carefully and to look carefully as we read them. Because at the end of this, I'm going to ask you to list the features of an informal letter. And so the more carefully you look and listen, the easier that task will be. Here's our first letter. Dear aunties, how's everyone doing back in cold, drizzly England? It's roasting hot here in the Sahara. Well, it's been such a busy week so far here in Cairo while we've been planning our next trip up the River Nile to Luxor. 
Do you remember that's where I told you we're going to look for King Tutankhamun's grave? Before we can leave, I have to make sure we've got all our stuff packed ready. Mind you, I'll have to hire dozens of people to carry it all from the boat to the dig site once we get there, since it weighs an awful lot. My favourite donkey's leg is a bit poorly, and she's incapable of walking, so I'll have to get her some medicine and ask a vet to look at her if I can find one. Hope that's not too expensive, or Lord C will moan about the cost. I reckon we're really on to the right place this time. All the information I've gathered shows Toots just got to be there. Fingers crossed, everyone. I'll write again when I've got some more news. Hope you're all well. Love, Howard. And here's our second letter, which is the reply from Howard's aunties. Dear Howard, we loved getting your last letter from Cairo because it's great hearing what you've been up to. It sounds incredible to be in Egypt hunting for all those fabulously beautiful artefacts. When we showed our friend Ada a picture from the newspaper of what you're doing, she said, oh, I wish I was there too. All the family is excited to see what miraculous treasures you unearthed in Luxor. Or maybe I should say unsand, ha ha. I've got a little bet on that there'll be several ounces of gold and I don't want to be disappointed. I'm sending some new handkerchiefs with this note because I just bet you've lost yours again. It must get sweltering there as well, so they'll certainly come in handy for wiping your face. We're so looking forward to hearing more of your news soon, and good luck searching for your old pal, King Tutankhamun. Lots of love, Auntie Vera. So hopefully looking at all those letters has given you a really good idea of what makes an informal letter. For your task today, I'd like you to look carefully back at the informal letters we have read today. So you might need to rewind the video and go back so that you can look at them again. And I'd like you to make a checklist of all the features that need to be included when writing this type of letter. There are a couple of tips here for you. Tip one, think about language and organisation. So think about the kind of words that are used and think about how the letter is set out on the page. Tip two, there should be at least eight things on your list. Write your list down and in tomorrow's lesson, we'll look at what items you should have on your list and you can see if you found them all. Good luck and I'll see you tomorrow.